Hi, so my name is Vichaj Muthumani and my team's project is a Pathfinder AI drone. Okay, so what is this project about? In this project, we are planning to design a drone and this drone will make use of a deep neural network uh, see for its brain and the deep neural network has to learn a task. So what task is the deep neural network supposed to learn is? It has to learn to find a path from a source all the way to a destination or target location. But, but the thing is the map on which the source and destination are, are located have a whole bunch of traps or obstacles and it would be the job of the drone to travel like round about these obstacles and go and hit the target. Okay, so we will be making use of reinforcement learning to do this uh, task. So now we will see what are the important key components of this uh, you know, project. First, I will show you the drone. So that's how the drone looks. And now, now I will show you the target. So that uh, you know, X in the circle is the target. And these would be the obstacles. So these are the key parts of our problem, like shown here visually. We will now have a look at the big picture and see things in context, okay? So here is the setup and as you can see on the screen, we've got the drone on the top left and we've got the target on like the bottom right and we've got a whole bunch of these obstacles, right? So we've got those black obstacles and like the red obstacle. The red obstacle is like a moving target. It moves from the left to the right, making the problem a little bit more challenging for the artificial intelligence, okay? So here's what happens. The drone in question has to find a path. Here is one as an example, moving all the way to the right and down, hitting the target. And like here is another path, which the drone could possibly take. Goes down, he goes to the right, goes all the way diagonally and it's the target, okay? So the purpose of the reinforcement learning paradigm that we are planning to apply, it has to learn Okay, so the drone has to learn to think on its own and it has to make up a policy or a set of rules to do this job of traveling from the source all the way down to the target destination and not hit any of the obstacles. So that is the big picture of our project. Okay, so uh, here are a couple of paths which the drone could possibly take if it learns a policy to travel from a source all the way to the destination target, okay? So how do we achieve this self-learning? We make use of a technique called as reinforcement learning, but to get there, we need to know about some of the moving paths of reinforcement learning. So we first just start by trying to get a handle on what reinforcement learning actually does, okay? So reinforcement, uh, <laughs> so reinforcement learning has the following like workflow. So first you've got the drone, or say the art artificial intelligence, so which I'm showing by the red arrow over there. The first thing that this does is our artificial intelligence has to take an action, okay? So when it takes an action, like in the world where it's located, it will get a response from the world, which we call as the environment, okay? So we get a response from the environment, which will take our drone, to a new state okay so if uh, and then from the new state uh, we also get a robot for taking a particular action so say if i go to a room think of me as the artificial intelligence if i go to a room dark room if i turn on the light which is the action i do the response from the environment would be to make the room bright right and now i end up in a new state from a dark room to a to a bright room and my reward in this case is I can see more. So that is the general you know, paradigm of reinforcement learning. Got an agent, it takes an action in an environment, it gets a response from the environment and a reward, and then the cycle will keep like repeating itself. So that's it for what is reinforcement learning at a very vague, uh, broad level. Now we will have a look at what is called a value function. This complicated expression that you see on the screen is the value function. But what does a value function mean? So a value function is a way 
to rank the state where like a robot will find itself in okay so if you see the pictorial example down below you see a world where there is a ruby on the left and there is fire on the right if our robo was to be close to the fire it is in a bad state right it will get burnt if but if our robo was close to the ruby it is in a good state right it will become rich so the value function is a way to represent this fact mathematically so if you look at our robo when he is close to the fire he he is in a state which has a value function of like minus like 1000 and that is bad if our robot moves away from the fire to a state v4 he has a value function of uh, like minus 150 which is slightly better hence the value function is a way to rank the states where our robo will find itself we will now have a look at the concept of an action value function also known as the q value so what the q value does is it gives a rank to a particular action that you can take from a particular state if you see the picture below our robot is in a state uh, number 3 right so if the robot was to move like to the left uh, the rank for moving to the left is given a score of plus 25 if he was to move to the right uh, the rank which is there for that action is like minus 125 hence uh, the action value function is used to give a rank to the action that you can take in a particular state so now we know how to rank uh, the states where we find ourselves in by using the value function we also know how to rank the actions that we can take in each state we find ourselves in by using the q value function now the next concept we will look at is what is known as a policy what a policy does is it will map an action to a state right so if our robot finds himself in a particular state it is the job of the policy to decide what action has to be taken here in the picture below we have an example of a policy where all the policy says is in each and every state the robot finds itself to move to the left this is indicated by the white arrows which are uh, pointing to the left if you see the big picture of the policy it is telling the robo hey go away from the fire and go to where the ruby is located this is an example of a policy so thus the job of our artificial intelligence is to learn like a policy okay so the way it learns the policy is to learn the values of q for each and every state the q value is a action value value right it tells uh, it actually ranks the actions so by learning the q values you're you are actually ranking the actions you can take per state then here you can see right uh, in this example in square 2 uh, we have two possible actions go to the left or go to the right and here you can see that uh, each of those actions has a rank so going to the left has a rank of plus 50 going to the right has a rank of like minus 67.5 then once it knows the q values it chooses the highest q value in each and every state it will find itself in so let's see an example of how it happens down here okay you see our robo he is in square 5 so he will have to choose a q value right he chooses the highest q value which is to move to the left shown by that arrow pointing to the left now he finds himself in a new state now he has to choose the value of q which is the highest so once again if he goes to the left the value of the q is higher to go to the left so he chooses that goes to square 3 same process repeats itself goes to square 2 same process repeats itself finally he makes it to square 1 and from here if he goes to the left he will get a reward of plus 100 based on the q value if he goes to the right he will get the value which is negative so by following this right by choosing the value of the q which is the highest we are able to generate a policy which is forcing our agent to move away from where the fire is to where the ruby is here is a quick review of what we are dealing with in the drone world so our state space is going to be a frame a frame from the screen is going to be the state space and then we have like an action space and this has eight possible actions north south east west like north east north west south east and south west and then we have a stage reward the stage uh, reward is a function of um, how close we are uh, say to the target if you are very close to the target 
you will have a higher reward and it is also a function of the number of obstacles uh, and how close you are say to the obstacles if you are super close to the obstacles and the target you will like get a lower reward so the data in a real world implementation for a project it consists of a tuple which has a state action uh, next state and a reward so these tuples they get stored in a replay memory and uh, we take batches of these tuples from the replay memory which will be used as a training set to train our neural networks to learn a policy now we will have a look at the dqn for the fully observable setup so the first component that we will have a look at is the replay memory replay memory has these tuple entries um, which have a state action like a stage reward and like the next state we take one of these entries and feed it into our dnn uh, implementation and uh, each of the entries has a state action pair it will get vectorized and then we will uh, you know feed it into d like the dnn which will learn the policy for mapping our states to action we now see the equation for the loss function this loss function is driven by the temporal difference say between two q values so first we have a target network and the target network is used to generate the target q value and then we have a policy network the policy network is used to generate like the q value of the state where we, we are located then like the difference between these two q values is used to make a delta and the delta will drive the back propagation which will tune the weights of the loss function okay so now we have a look at what happens when we start the training so first when the training begins right if you look at the artificial intelligent agent the drone in our case it's kind of wobbly right that's because it's doing a lot of exploration in the solution space and trying out a lot of random things. So that's why it's moving about all, you know, like wobbly. And uh, but slowly, if you notice over time, it is trying its best to make its way towards the target, but it fails, you know, miserably by hitting those black uh, block of obstacles. All right. So this would be big torture for <laughs> a reinforcement learning agent, but it does what it can. All right, so it's trying again and again, getting smashed left and right. Okay. Oh, it got hit by the red uh, <laughs> uh, block. Okay, so it's trying. But it's learning a policy, right? At least it's learning to move towards where the target is, slowly inching its way towards it. Okay, let's see. Okay, how about that? It's about to hit the target. <laughs> yes it did okay and now it's back to learning again at least it hit the target once uh, it's becoming less wobbly look it just circumnavigated around the uh, around the red block once again it hit the target okay so it keeps doing this again and again it has learned something now wow that was neat okay so as you can see it took a while but slowly our reinforcement learning agent has been able to learn a policy to kind of dodge the obstacles as much as it can and go and hit the target. So now we have a look at the results. So if you see the first square over here, uh, from the first episode at 0 to 110, you see the spikes. What the spikes here represent is the number of times it got super close to the target or it hit the target. You can see uh, like a sparse number of you know spikes for the first 110 episodes. If we move to the next 110 episodes from 110 to 210, you see the frequency of the spikes goes up. This indicates that a drone is able to hit the target at a higher frequency. So the general trend has been um, the frequency of the spikes keeps going up with an increase in the number of training episodes, which is indicative of the fact that we are hitting the target more often.